God, as we go to our Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy. And your mercy. Father, I just, I just want to stop and give thanks to you for the very small things. Just for what we've been blessed with. Just the fact that we got up this morning. That we're standing up right here. We're not sick or disabled. Or we're not laying in a bed and can't get about. We're not sick and terminal. But Father, we're up and about and able to move about and enjoy your richest blessings. And Father, we just want to give you thanks for that. I want to thank you for the blessings of life, the weather, the, the, just the, the things that we just take for granted. They just happen. They don't happen without you. Yes. And so we just want to stop. <coughs> thank you. Say thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Yes, doing you. the lives of our families. And Lord, for prospering us and, and giving us great blessings and things. I mean, many people have celebrated graduations and, and celebrated uh, those finer things that go on in your life about this time of year. Some of are getting families together for vacations and, and just enjoying your richest blessings. And I just want to say thank you for that. I want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you for a body of believers that still turn their eyes upon you and trust in you to guide and direct them. They're not looking to some man or some program to fulfill them, but they're looking to you to fulfill them because you're the only one that can fill that, that void in our hearts and in our lives. We seek Many things in our lifetime to try to fill that void, but you're the only thing. It's a void that is left solely for you. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for a church that still ministers that you're the one. The one true God. The only one that can fill that, that void. And so Father, tonight we just give you praise and glory. We ask that everything that we do is say. We ask that you guide this teaching tonight. That everything taught to glorify you and lift up the kingdom of heaven. And for that, we're truly grateful and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, that everybody said. Amen. 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 And just a moment ago, Mike, you were running up something that was talking about all the things we had coming up. Could you just run that up there real fast just so everybody can see it? There you go. In the next week or two, that's all the good stuff coming up. And if you go out just a little bit further than that, there's going to be, I think, the 13th, we have a church business informational meeting uh, so that you know what's going on and you're up to date. Of course, following that, uh, Father's Day. And then I want to say on May the... Is it June? June? No, 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 no. Yeah, June, we're having, I think, the Lord's Supper. Down the 27th, I think it is. And so... So we've got a lot of things going on, and uh, there's a few things that, that are going on right now that didn't make that list, because that's, that's looking forward. If you are in the Killing area this weekend, I'm going to invite you out to the rodeo, and uh, take your chance. Uh, it's 50-50 right now, but you can get wet or you can be dry. But uh, there's a lot of... Uh, Sammy Andrews is our, is our stock contractor, so there is some of the uh, best rough bucking stock in the industry that's going to be here with us. Uh, at the same time, I know tomorrow night for sure, uh, Sage Kinsey, Trey Kinsey, and J.B. Rooney all buck out tomorrow night as bull runners. For those of you who don't know, that's a world champion in the NFR and a world champion in the PBO. Not, not this year, not the latest one, but you'll know them by name. And, uh, and then Trey, of course, is the little brother of Sage. And, and so, that being said, <coughs> you're going to see some fine athletes. Uh, Kim Rubens tomorrow night or Friday night, Haley Kinsel, world champion barrel racer, will be out. So there's a lot of, of really good cowboys and cowgirls that are going to be making their way through, through town. And let me tell you the whole thing about this. The Killing Rodeo Committee is not committed to making a whole lot of money. We'd love to, but we're not. And I'm going to tell you how I know that. And I'm going to tell you the trick to this. So all of you know. Tickets at the gate are $15 for an adult. If you will go to Dollar General or the Dollar Store, you can get four cans of vegetables 
for about 25 cents each. And if you can't catch them that way, they'll be about 30 something cents each, so about a dollar and a quarter. So either for a dollar or a dollar and a quarter, if you'll bring those four canned goods to the gate and put them in the box, they'll give you a free ticket. <laughs> so if you really wanted to, you could go to the rodeo all three nights, and if you if you bought the best vegetables there were, <laughs> you could you could go three nights for six bucks. <laughs> Store of choice, H E B. So I mean, you think about that a minute. They're not trying to kill you here for money. So you have an opportunity to come and be a part of that. If you want to pay the top price. Please, by all means, the rodeo will put it to good use. I promise you. But if you don't, that is a way, because we feel like that's a way to give back to the community. Uh, and especially during this time, uh, our, our food pantry has been kept really well in killing, but we can always accentuate uh, what's there by giving to it. So uh, please help us out, come by and see us. Uh, if, if you catch us uh, and we have some available, uh, we'll get you on band so you can eat with us. And, and, uh, but we're proud to always get to be a part of that and, and get to uh, sponsor some, some different pieces of it. And so we're very, very thankful. And, and uh, they, they, you, you'll see our little banner out there and they'll talk about us a little bit and, and uh, give us a, a little bit of, uh, of advertisement for free. So if you get a chance, come on out. We'd love to have you. Love to have you be a part of it. Also, let's see what else. Oh, yes. My wife and myself are going to get a chance to go on vacation with our kids. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I think you heard me say. And what? Oh, yes, yeah, she gets to fish. Oh, yay. <laughs> Folks, I married a redneck. <laughs> I don't remember if it was our first or second date, but it was catfish and a tractor pull. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I got you, girl. And I'm going to tell you, I've never been to a dog on tractor pull until I met her. <laughs> I'm expecting to see all these farmers with their John Deere's, and I'm getting there, these guys can drive an aircraft. It's fun. Oh my goodness, this is not a tractor. <laughs> She does like fishing and racing and all the yeah. things that you like from the eastern part of the country. That's right. And, uh, so. <laughs> but we're getting that opportunity. And, Yay. and uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, Brother Mike Kersey is going to fill in for me next Wednesday. All right. Uh, and he always does a wonderful job. I get great reports back from you guys. And so thank you for that. And then uh, Mr. Ben Daniel is going to fill the pulpit on Sunday evening. I believe it's the 30th. And, uh, and I'm excited about that. And uh, you will be too. He's a member of our church, him and his wife, and his mom and dad. And, and uh, this is coming home for him. And so to get to stand in the pulpit, he's at home. And so uh, don't, don't treat him like they treated Jesus when he was at home. <laughs> you know, please be a little kinder than that. And uh, no, he'll do a wonderful job. I know he will. And, and so we're excited that, that these men have offered and covered. And, and so. Uh, just be in prayer for us. You know, if I said we're with our kids, and, uh, so that makes it all for different people. And next year, the kids and the grandbaby. Ah, uh, yeah. Next year, the grandbaby. <laughs> kids can do for themselves. All right. If you have your Bible tonight, we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50, and believe it or not, it's, it's very short, a tune of about 11 verses, but we're going to spend a night there, and there's a reason for that, and you'll see in a minute. When we get into it, well, we'll just, we'll just get started. That's the best way to do it. Thus says the Lord, where is your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your inquiries you were sold, and for your transgressions your mother was sent away. Why, when I came, 
Was there no man? Why, when I called, was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, by my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a desert. Their fish stink for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and make sackcloth their covering. We're going to stop there for a minute. We've got enough to talk about right there. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of it, and then I'm going to let you share with me. Basically, in my notes, I just wrote down, those to whom God sins are justly charged with bringing all the troubles that they were in upon themselves. And by their own willfulness and obstinacy, it being made to appear that God was able and ready to help them if they had been fit for deliverance. Now, in layman's terms, I like what it says here because first of all, it talks about Israel, Zion, being the mother, Judah being the mother. That's what it speaks of. It's a reference. And it says, now, I sent you away, I put you away, but there is no certificate of divorce. Take divorce, you have to put you away. And this is also, when it talks about the Father, that's God. God Almighty. And he says, look, you are my children. And I put you away, but I didn't divorce you. That's what so many of us, when we're not living for God, He doesn't quit loving us, but He puts us away. He wants us to come back to Him a little while, anytime we're ready. Here I am. But He's not going to chase you. He's not going to chase you down. He's a gentleman about this. He's not going to wrestle you to the ground and make you uh, submit to Him. That's why he says, I, I gave you no certificate, but I didn't divorce myself from you. I didn't turn my back and walk away. I just put you away. That's what he did to him here. And there's right, the Jews. Just put them away. He said, I didn't sell you. I didn't sell you to a creditor to, to sell in my debt. There wasn't somebody out there I owed something and said, okay, here, take my children. That's not what I did. Yeah. <laughs> Be an easy way to get out of that, wasn't it? <laughs> but that's not what he did. What he did was he let your iniquities cause you to put your own self on the block for the creditors. That's what we do, folks. We we do things to ourselves. That's right. See, you know, a lot of times people go, I just can't believe God would send people to hell. He ain't sent anybody to hell. That's right. You by your choices, make those that decision. Mm -hmm. He just carries it out. That's right. He says, I'm going to be the judge in the end. Not me. I'm not judging anybody. Man, I got no right to judge anybody. Right. Nor do you. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not so we're not self-righteous appointed judges here. Only God can do that. Yes. So one day, based on our decision making, he's going to carry out the justice that we deserve. You're not going to be able to look at anybody and go, well, it was your fault. Nope. 